800 pounds of steel, 4,000 feet of wire, over 355 new electronic components, 45 elite technicians and mechanics working 1,080 hours. That's what you need when you go from this to this. Up to 27 feet long, weighing in at over three tons, stretch limousines are some of the longest, most luxurious and imposing passenger cars on the road. Their plush interiors pack the latest technology and they embody status and success for CEOs, rock stars, and heads of state. How are these incredibly luxurious and impossibly long custom cars created? We're going to show you on this episode of Popular Mechanics, how'd they do that? Hi, my name is Todd Boyer. I'm the Chief Operations Officer for LCW Automotive Corp. Today we're gonna to show you how we take a Lincoln MKT town car and turn it into a 120 inch stretch Lincoln MKT limousine. Located in San Antonio, Texas, and established in 1964, LCW Automotive have been customizing limousines for over 40 years. In 2011, Ford announced that the venerable Lincoln Town Car sedan, the livery industry standard for 30 years, was being put out to pasture. But Lincoln wasn't about to let down their loyal clients from around the world. This year, the limousine torch was passed to the new Lincoln MKT Town Car. So what we have here is a brand new Lincoln MKT town car. It's going to be cut and stretched into a limousine. The normal MKT comes with a glass roof. This car does not. You cannot cut and stretch glass. This MKT town car can be stretched up to 120 inches, giving us a total capacity of 10 passengers, including the driver. Any bigger than 120 inches is really going to be an issue for the integrity of the product the safety of the braking system, and the overall function of the entire car itself. The MKT Town Car is built on a specially engineered heavy-duty chassis. The axle assembly uses heavy-duty front and rear half shafts. Features include an upgraded suspension with a higher spring rate, heavy-duty electric power steering, and a higher capacity transmission. The hub assembly has been improved with upgraded wheel bearings. Standard all-wheel drive completes the package. Most importantly, it is stretchable by up to 120 inches. But it's going to take 45 days of skilled labor, 4,000 additional feet of wiring, and over 800 pounds of extra steel. Surprisingly enough, the engine that comes with the standard Lincoln MKT for retail use is the exact same engine that we received on the limousine. A really neat thing about the way we received the Lincoln MKT is Ford provides us with a split loom electrical harness. Our harness actually comes with a connector that splits it in half, knowing that the car is going to be cut into two. Ford then provides us with the center section that's up to 126 inches long, allowing us for a little bit of breathing room when we install that new harness into the car. 120 inches or 10 feet is a pretty big stretch, and it's not easy to do. It takes precision engineering, total attention to detail, and a crack team of 45 experts. Let's break it down and see just what needs to be done to turn an MKT town car into an MKT limousine. Days one to two, the MKT town car arrives from Ford. The town car MKT is delivered covered in plastic to protect the interior and exterior. Days three to five, the design team work out and finalize the schematics of the car's interior and exterior according to the customer's exact specifications. Days six to seven, the team goes to work and strips the car's interior. This car is basically gutted and covered in more plastic. Days 8 through 11, strengthening braces are installed and the MKT is put onto a rolling trolley, locked into position, and hoisted up. The cutting team slices the car in half. Days 11 through 14, the two halves are separated and extended steel chassis rails are welded in. These will support the additional stress put on the vehicle. The team constructs a new frame section, while in the workshop, a new shaped fiberglass roof is made using a mold. Days 14 through 25, the roof is covered in structural foam adhesive and mounted to the rockers. Then the floors, cross beams, and pillars are put in. At this stage, three separate crews work on the car simultaneously. Days 25 through 32, the body shop is prepping the panels for paint work. Days 32 through 44, the next 10 days sees the painting and polishing take place, and a full insulation package is installed. The final line team then puts in the seats, electronics, ice maker, TVs, bar consoles, everything needed for a luxury interior. And on day 45, the fully customized car is finished, inspected, and ready for delivery. 
But before the vehicle even gets to the workshop, design plans must be made according to the client's demands. So here we use AutoCAD to do three different things. Design the interior of the limousine, the exterior, and the electrical system for the vehicle. So what we'll do is we'll create a line drawing of the standard MKT before it's even stretched. We'll then take that line drawing and stretch it out. And so it gives us an opportunity to send this drawing to the client and show them how their car would look with the different variations available. AutoCAD gives us the opportunity to see the electrical system laid out in front of us. We'll take a photograph of the interior of this vehicle, put it into the AutoCAD program, and then start drawing on top of the interior. Before AutoCAD was ever in existence, we had line drawers sketch the car and give us a color painting of the car. Now with AutoCAD, the template of the car is there. It's just a matter of what you want to change. The world's longest limousine measures 100 feet. It rides on 26 tires and is so long it needs hinges in the middle to allow it to turn corners. Features include a jacuzzi, a sun deck, a heated swimming pool, and a helipad. We're going to take out almost every component inside of this car. The seats, carpet, pillar post, headliner material. The reason why we do this is so through the cut and weld process, there aren't any weld sparks that are gonna hit the side panels, hit the door panels, burn the leather inside of the car. It's just gonna put them in harm's way. The reason why we leave the dashboard in the car is because we really don't wanna damage any of the OEM equipment or components that are behind that dash. So what we'll do is cover the dashboard with protective vinyl material in case a piece of weld would spark and hit that area of the car. After the strip process is complete, we'll actually bring the vehicle up onto our lift system. Once it's up on the lift system, we'll be able to roll our trolley underneath the car, getting ready for the full cut and stretch of this car. LCW was started by my father, Ken Boyer, in 1972 in Brooklyn, New York. We've been manufacturing limousines and armored cars this entire time. LCW Automotive Corp is a QBM and CMC coach builder. That means we're a qualified vehicle manufacturer for Ford and a Cadillac master coach builder. Growing up around these cars, maybe even thinking that I was conceived in one of these cars, I always knew this is exactly what I wanted to do. So the entire cut process is gonna take us approximately 16 working hours. What they're going to do is cut the floor, the lower rockers and the upper rockers in that period of time. Ford provides LCW with all specifications for the cut. They specify where on the car is the zero point. This is the point from which all measurements relating to the cut will be made. The floor rocker is cut 14.96 inches ahead of the zero point, while the roof rocker is cut 3.38 inches ahead of the zero point, creating an offset effect. The offset cut creates more strength than a solid cut line would. Once the vehicle is cut in half, it needs not to move at all. That way when we take the car and split it and attach our chassis rails, we know that we have a precision stretch within the conversion. So we have a 4,650 pound vehicle that we want to prevent from moving like an earthquake. So the chassis is sitting on the pivot points for the pre-cut. What we do is we put a V-shaped weld into the pivot points, preventing the vibration in the vehicle or any shifting in the vehicle throughout the cut process. Ford has given us a specification as to where they want these pivot points based on the engineering and the time that they've spent building the prototype vehicles. We also have cross braces that we've tacked into the car. Now these are critical for holding up the upper rockers of the vehicle. When the vehicle is split in half, these will support the upper rockers and prevent them from collapsing in on the car. So there's a nominal weight that's actually being supported. All they really need to do here is just keep these upper rockers from vibrating throughout the cut process, so when we put the extension rockers on the car, they're actually straight across the vehicle. We mount them very, very close to where the car is being cut, and the cut will go right between the two cross braces of the car. Now the fun begins. Time to cut the car in half. We've now cut this car in half, 
and we've done this all with your standard Sawzall that you can buy at your local home improvement store. The most expensive limousine built is the $2.5 million Midnight Rider. Classified as a tractor-trailer limousine, the Midnight Rider covers 460 square feet and weighs 56,560 pounds. The interior features two floors and is modeled after a 19th century railroad car. From the earliest models, the whole point of the limo was to give its riders lots more space on the inside. This is where LCW puts the stretch in stretch limousine. There's more than just cutting the chassis in half in the upper rockers. We need to cut our heater lines, AC lines, the fuel lines, and the brake lines. We will now extend these lines as well as the chassis of the vehicle, giving all of that communication to the front and rear of the car. What we do is we actually take a swedge lock fitting, which is a fitting manufactured by a company called Swedge Lock, that will go over all of these ends on the front of the vehicle. And then we have similar tubing that matches the gauge and the size of these tubes here that will go in between the 120 inch stretch. This is the extension of the exhaust system. This is a fixture we put together here in order to keep these lined up and separate them at a certain distance. We cannot have them side by side because we don't have much room in between the muffler. So we have to keep these staggered, such as this. So the Lincoln MKT comes to us with a repeat drive shaft. We take that drive shaft out of the vehicle, we send it off to one of our vendors that then turns that into a five-piece drive shaft. This local vendor builds drive shafts for garbage trucks and big rigs. They have the capability of a drive shaft tester that's up to 200 inches long for our product. What they do is they test for vibrations in the shaft to make sure that we're gonna have a smooth ride at the end of the day. The roof rails and lower rockers of the Stretch MKT are constructed from three 20 gauge steel panels. An inner panel and outer panel are welded together and then a further steel covering panel is welded onto that structure. This guarantees the integrity and strength of the vehicle. LCW makes all of their roof rails and lower rockers in-house. Building armored cars here at LCW, we get a little bit of an insight as to other limousines and armored cars that you've seen. Currently the most popular one being the Presidential Beast. We do know that the Presidential's vehicle is extraordinarily heavy, meaning that it was armored with ballistic steel rather than the fiberglass composite armoring product. This 10 pound sample piece of glass is about three inches thick. The rumor is that the Presidential Beast has glass twice as thick as this. We have our rocker moldings that are now on the vehicle. They've been primed to prevent them from rusting. We now have our Bentler crash beam. Bentler is a company that provides the crash beams to almost every automobile manufacturer in the world. So this is a NHTSA approved crash beam. This beam is the only thing protecting you between your body inside the car and another car giving you a side impact. Our factory pillars have now been installed as well. They are welded top and bottom and secured in place. Same as what you would see in the standard vehicle at the front door. So this pillar is the same pillar that we purchased from Ford in order to put in the center of the limousine conversion. And you can see here we have our steel floor is also installed in the vehicle. This is a 16 gauge steel that we have for the flooring. So what we do is put in a 120 inch stretch floor panel that will match the OEM styling and shape of the hump that the drive shaft will later be installed into. So our side panels are rolled and broken before they come to us from an outside manufacturer. It's an aluminum side panel that we actually bolt onto the car. The reason why we bolt the side panel onto the vehicle is so if there were to be a side impact or any damage to it, it could easily be removed from the car, repaired, or removed from the car and have a new side panel mounted onto the vehicle. The other option would be welding the side panel onto the car, and the amount of hours and the labor involved in cutting a weld off of a vehicle would be astronomical. This side panel, it's an aluminum steel that's .08 zero of an inch. Being aluminum is not going to rust or corrode. It's also lightweight. It's aircraft aluminum, 
So this is the same kind of aluminum that you're gonna see on an airplane. It's harder to work with than say a steel side panel because it's a more flexible product. So we'll take the additional work in the body shop to get all the benefits out of that product. And on the roof of the car, it's really all about appearance. It's not about durability of the actual roof. What we're worried about is having it look really pretty up on top. We use a fiberglass composite foam material and it's also a fiberglass sandwich. The reason why we use this material is because it's about a third the weight of steel. This foam is very lightweight, and it's also not very strong, obviously, until we take it, drill holes inside of the foam, and sandwich it with our fiberglass. Now, when we sandwich it with the fiberglass, we're actually putting resin on either side of it, which will then go through the holes that you can see here in the board, and that's actually where the durability will come from. These bits of resin act like nails. I can take this, put my knee up against it, and it is just not going anywhere. You would see this kind of a material used in a sailboat. Um, even some aircrafts have fiberglass composite holes. President Kennedy's limousine was a stretched and armored 1961 Lincoln Continental four-door convertible. After 1963, the limousine was significantly revamped. Changes included a complete rearmoring of the rear passenger compartment and a new hand-built high compression engine. The limousine remained in service until 1977. So here we are at about day 33 in production. We're installing our air conditioning units that are gonna cool the vehicle down in the back of the car in addition to the OEM air conditioning. We'll put in our seat frames and our divider surround, which will separate the driver from the passengers in the rear of the car. We're installing our double bubble radiant insulation on the side panels and our jute insulation on the floor. The jute insulation is a little bit thicker than the radiant insulation so that the floor noise when you're driving down the road doesn't come up into the vehicle. In the paint process, we're gonna put three layers of a base coat and then three layers of a clear coat. So what we need to do is get the car into the booth, cover it up completely, and then only spray the areas that we've added to the car, which would in our case will be the 120 inch center panel. This is done by hand. We're at the OEM manufacturer. The car is going to be painted by robots. For the power distribution system in this vehicle, the Lincoln MKT comes with a 220 amp alternator. The standard vehicle has a lot of amenities that the limousine package does not. And what they've done is removed the heated steering wheel, heated seats, air conditioned seats, the heated mirrors from the standard package, allowing us to use the power that would have gone towards those components in the limousine package for the additional componentry that we add to the back of the car. The OEM vehicle doesn't have any room to add a secondary alternator to the car. So what we've done is use that power in the back of the car from the components that they've removed. In addition to that, we install a marine battery into the interior of the vehicle. That gives us a closer source to the power for everything that we install inside the car. The marine battery is a gel cell battery, and it's also waterproof. After 45 labor-intensive days, the additional 800 pounds of steel, 4,000 feet of wiring, over 355 electronic components, and the skills of 45 workers, the job is finally done, and the car is ready. Meet the Lincoln MKT Premier Limousine. So here we have our finished Lincoln MKT 120-inch stretch. This vehicle is now fully equipped. At this stage, we have an eight hour inspection process that I'm gonna do myself. I wanna make sure that every vehicle that leaves this facility is 100% ready for the road. The most nerve wracking part of the inspection process is putting the key in, turning the car on, and making sure that everything inside this vehicle lights up, illuminates, and works properly. As part of the inspection, Todd takes the car out on the road to make sure there is no wind noise detectable or vibrations from the drive shaft. We've just seen what it takes to stretch a Lincoln MKT by 10 feet and turn it into an LCW 120-inch Lincoln MKT Premier Limousine. 
A combination of state-of-the-art technology, the painstaking care of 45 master craftsmen, 800 pounds of steel, 4,000 feet of wiring, and 355 new electronic components. The result? And that's how it's done.